Hello world. Um, how many we got in tonight, uh, Andy? Oh goodness, we have one, two, three, four, five, a dozen, give or take. That's Maybe awesome. Ten. That, that's great. Welcome. Um, if uh, you don't know who I am, um, my name is Don Higgins. I am the art director for 1879. I am the uh, writer and illustrator for Hey Penny Pie. Uh, which started as a webcomic and then turned into a uh, 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 graphic novel. And it did well at the Gen Con when we uh, uh, were selling the books on, on uh, at Gen Con. So well that they decided, hey, let's try you out on the flagship. And uh, suddenly I was drawing a uh, webcomic and graphic novel for Earth Dawn called Champions Challenge. Um, tonight, uh, for the drink and draw. Uh, first of all, the drink of choice. Um, if you're paying attention to trivia, Don's drink of choice is a mudslide. So, cheers, everyone. Mudslides, if, if you've got them. And that's where I will start with this. Now, uh, the drink and draw usually is started with a, uh, a theme. Now... Um, in 2016, I did a, um, an exercise for myself. Uh, I was, I was stuck on an artistic plateau and I couldn't budge off of it. And, um, I decided that I really needed to push myself. So I did what's called a 365 challenge, which was to draw, uh, Character, creature, concept, drawing, one a day, every day, for a year. No repeats. Um, and I learned about ooh, 15 days in that I was out of ideas. Um, so the process was to just start drawing. Um, the funny story about the 365 is, I mean, I made it. I got all the way through the 365, about halfway through... My fiance, my art director, um, looked at me and she says, well, why are you calling it a 365? Um, and I said, one a day for a year? Duh. And she looked at me and she goes, you realize 2016 is a leap year, right? And I went, um, uh, <laughs> not so smart now, are you, Don? Are you going to dumb me some more? And I said, I get a day off, right? I get a day off. She goes, no, no, you don't. 366. But it's already called a 365, so there's a bonus one. So in the book that I that I uh, self-published, <laughs> there are 366 character concepts. But the main thing was is when I've got nothing in my noggin and I do need to draw something, what do I do? Well, normally I don't start um, with a drink, but it's helping tonight. Um, let me know where everybody's from. If anybody wants to chime in and l let everybody know where they're from, I will switch the screen here so you're not just looking at just my ugly mug. There we go. Um, I am gonna start with a gray tone background. Um, this is actually a uh, image that I put together from uh, uh, a uh, Stratmore gray tone paper, uh, scanned it and brought it into Photoshop. It just is a nice image to, uh, to start working from. A nice background, so instead of a stark, stark white. Um, not that nothing's wrong with stark white, but eh, nice gray tone that I can play with later. You'll see why. So if Ariel is from Boston, Awesome. Welcome. I think you already know, but I'm in the Springfield, Missouri area. Okay. Now, Missouri, isn't that the show me state? It is. Awesome. And I, I've heard every joke about that. Oh, now that sounds like a challenge, Andy. It is. Let's see. What can we do? All right. So when I had no idea, what I'm doing here is I'm going to start with a uh, let's see, let's go here, let me change the opacity, so we go with that, and we go with that, and okay, 
Now, I have something in my noggin. Let's get on the right. There we go. And I'm just going to work from my own little thought process. Now, when I start a sketch, it's nice, loose, simple. These are guidelines. They are not written in stone. I start with some basic shapes. And Andy, I think you're going to know exactly where I'm going in just a minute. Okay. I bet not. I'm really bad at this game. <laughs> there oh. is video for those of you who haven't realized. If you go to our Twitch stream, you can see the video. So I believe it's Twitch. TV slash Fossa Games Official. Type that out. Should be correct. TV Fossa Games Official. If someone says spelled things correctly, looks like I did. And you can see the video. Yeah, throughout the weekend, anything that's video related, you can go there. Um, Part of my job is to watch the chat room in full so that Don doesn't have to. That way I can concentrate on my drawing. And we can tell Don things and mess it up and tell him to put email like a robot on top of it. Yeah, we could that. Helpful suggestions that involve, you know... Messing up the artist. And volleyball montages. Volleyball? Transformers doing a volleyball montage. Ah, no. And by the way, yes, I did get an artist to draw that. <laughs> he said he could draw anything, so I gave him a useful thing. Oh, I do know what it is. There you go. I know what that is. Make a, make a saddle and a windling. It's awesome. Full name is Morgan. You're great. <laughs> Who's my favorite Transformer? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I remember the name correctly. It was the boombox that had the, the cassette tapes that turned into Transformers. I'm, I'm, it's been a while since I watched this. I, the Probably the evil one, but Soundwave sounds correct. Soundwave is correct. Yeah. I believe that it's still downstairs, and I don't have the cassette tape things anymore, the little guys, but the actual boombox one is downstairs still in the toy room. Not that I'm actually secretly a six-year-old, but I might be. Now, again, trying to get this all laid out in a way then I can set this up, get basic guidelines in. This is not by any stretch of the imagination the final drawing. No, we're just having some, some fun sketching. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting the head in here. Is my rider male or female? Oh, hold on. It's obviously, it's, it's a female. <laughs> But this goes to um, another secret project, Pet Jokes. You actually probably know what secret project it is, even. Me? It's the one I was supposed to do with Jack. I am working on several secret projects. This comes from a joke from the one that I was supposed to do with Jack that is now James's project. So that might tell you which one it is. We happen to want the female windling character to ride on a giant carnivorous squirrel. Being a good and smart person, I did run that by Morgan, who is not pro-squirrel. That's a mess. That one actually, oh my gosh. Wait, it actually plays MP3s? Okay, mine did not play MP3s. Yours is obviously newer than mine. What about you?
about you, Don? Do you have a favorite Transformer? Oh, for years it was Starscream. Interesting choice. Why? Oh, I can remember. Everybody loves a villain, and he was a conniving villain. Yeah, I can see this. I'm good with this answer. Okay, so now we've got that, 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 and that. Okay, there's my base lines. Okay. So now I go up here and I move that information. And you'll tell us when the audience gets to tell you things and mess it all up for you? <laughs> I meant improve it. I meant improve it. Right, right. That's what you meant. Sure, that, Sure, that's what you meant. this up so that it becomes the, that. So Shark Force is saying there's a band that cosplays as the Transformers. And one of the group does dress up as Soundwave. How fun is that? I can I see that. I need to look that, that up. Have a YouTube video? You should share a link to the YouTube video or something. It's really cool. And now I'm going to go in here. Now, Don, I remember seeing you do some of these because you do live stream like every Wednesday, I think, right? I do a Facebook, Facebook live stream. Facebook? Yep, on Facebook every Wednesday at two o'clock. I really like how using the gray allowed you to go back with like a white ink and brighten up things. Mm -hmm. cool. Put in really uh, uh, make the white highlights pop. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Thank you. Things I learned. Alright, so now, don't mind if I peg, we're on this, come on, why aren't you doing this? There we go. I'm getting there. If the drawing is bad and doesn't do what you want, do you send it to a firm? Do I send it to who? That's why it wasn't doing what it wanted, I assumed it was the drawing. So no, the, the pen... Was, the drawing is bad. No. go to a term. The drawing is bad. I send it to uh, detention. Detention. That's not good. Does it need to do lines there? No, it doesn't do lines. It just sits in the corner. There's a funny story of, that um, my my mother used to do to me when when I was would work on drawings, and she would tell me. If something was wrong with the drawing, I had three chances to fix it. And if I didn't fix really? it, and, yep, she, I had three, ha three, three chances to fix it. And if it, I didn't get, get it fixed in, by the third one, she would reach out to my drawing table, pull it off the drawing table, and destroy it. That doesn't sound very kind. Well, it taught me to get the job done right and not to rest on my laurels and say, well, that's close enough. Well, I mean, that, that's valid. That's, that's fine. I mean, yeah, was it harsh? Absolutely it was harsh. But in the long run, now the uh, it, it, it helped me professionally because... Now I don't ever say or allow any of my students to say, oh, that's close enough. They'll never see that. Yeah, they will. I can guarantee it. And I can see that, uh, just the taking it and throwing it out part. I think I'm with brighter side. It's a bit intense for us. Ah. I can see saying, like, no, keep working on it. It's not there yet. But. Okay. But what do I know? There's a lot of reasons I am apparently not an artist. What, what circle is this cavalry in your drawing here? What? Say that again? Did what circle? What circle it was? I have... A circle. I don't know. I'm just running Obviously with it. Obviously, the 19,000th circle. 
It doesn't exist as a circle, Don, but that's okay. Okay. So, I don't know. Don doesn't actually really play. We're, we're trying to get Don to play. There's a lot of games that I would have liked to have played, but the problem is I have rarely found Don, the right GM. You should play at my table one day. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, well, that's what but you keep saying. Circle goes up to like nine. Sorry, what was that? Who me? Yes, you. Oh, I, it, it, I, you keep saying I need to come and play your game sometime, but yeah. I have played games where they figured out pretty quick I'm a storyteller. That's and, the, what we expect. Mm-hmm. Well, I knew a lot the of. Now, a lot of DMs that I've run into in the past have been all about the numbers, not about uh, yeah, the story. Nope, and nope, nope. <laughs> that's where I have problems. Table, because so I come up... Said, you, you'll do great at my tables. It's all about the story. Since we're discussing it while you're drawing, yes. what are you guys? Are you guys number people or story people? So I'm all about the role play and the story. I tend to do it different. I'm like with different group, depending on like what group and what system I'm working with. But, uh, some some people really do enjoy like playing RPGs as like tabletop board games. Other people get way into the role playing, and usually there's not enough overlap that you end up having to pick one. Well, I don't actually enjoy the whole numbers thing. So I figure if somebody likes that, they can find a table where that's the gig. Because I think the GM should get to enjoy what they're doing, too. That's yeah, why I, I, the GM. I tend to enjoy enough variety in games that I'll, I'll end up figuring out a way to make it work whatever the, 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 the table wants to do. But, yeah. In general, I do prefer more narrative-focused games. If I can, if I can get the players to participate, sometimes it's like you know you're trying to get your players to tell you an interesting story about how they're accomplishing something. It feels like you're pulling teeth. Well, it just takes a little bit of training with them usually. Mm. One of the games I played, I played a warlock, and it had been a long time since I had played any role-playing game whatsoever. But it was a a uh, Pathfinder game. And okay. the guy I played with the warlock had spider walk and and raise the dead as two of his powers. And the DM, because he got tired of me being creative, I suppose, for lack of a better term, had me thrown into jail. And he would have some obnoxious um, jailer come and talk to me every now and again. And say if I would do certain things um, that obviously benefited the GM, he'd let me go. I forget yeah. exactly how we worded it, but that was the general premise. Is that you do what my lord tells you to every time he tells you to, and we'll let you go. And I, went, and I said basically that. I said, nah. And the whole time, I'm pointing fingers like this if you can see what I'm doing on the video I'm, the whole time he's talking to me I'm doing this three sessions we played and I've spent all that time sitting in my chair waiting for my turn around and every time it became my turn he would send in the jailer are you ready to do this I would just sit there and go nah and he finally had enough and he sits there and goes what are you doing? Why do you keep pointing your fingers like that? And I said, never mind. You'll see in a minute. And he's like, well, uh, okay. And he has the jailer leave. And I said, now, the jailer is gone, right? He goes, yes. So I'm just talking to the GM, right? He goes, yes. And I said, fine. I have the keys in my hands. He goes, how do you have the keys in your hands? And everybody at the table knew this was the moment. And like, what did you do, Don? And I said, I have the keys. I'm going to break out. And he's like, but, but okay, explain how this is done. And I said, well, you've had multiple 
times that you've come in, I'm assuming time has passed. He goes, yes. And I said, I'm in a jail. He says, yes, this is, this is a dirty jail. He goes, yes. And I said, I have the power to raise the dead. He goes, yes. And I said, I've been killing cockroaches for weeks now. And I've been raising them to do my bidding. And they just crawled up your leg and stole the keys. I'm breaking out. And the whole table wouldn't even let, let him tell me to roll dice to see if it was successful. They said, that's brilliant. Let him out. Let him out. That <laughs> so. seems like a very good use. But it seems like it was still not a great chance. See, the only issue I would have had, well, no, one number one, I would have never done that to a player. You don't, you don't make players do what you want. That's just not how that works. But I would have insisted that you tell me you're doing that because I would have thought it was hilarious. But you can't tell me you were doing something for, you know, three days without me knowing. Mm -hmm. The GM's job is to know what's going on. However, you wouldn't have felt the need to keep it a secret so that the GM wasn't countering you because that's what you were doing. Pretty much. He was keeping it secret because he was going to come up with some reason to try to screw you out of it. Mm hmm. To thwart it. And a good GM doesn't need to screw you out of it, if that makes sense. Oh. Within two sessions, he killed my character. After that? After that. Yeah, no, you had a bad GM, dude. Because. You have to play with a good GM. What he did is he put the whole party in this desert and then he. Um had a uh, sandworm, basically. Huge sandworm come up in front of us, and everybody's going, I cast this, or I shoot him with a bow and arrow. And I'm like, so where did you shoot him? Well, I shot him. And I'm like, where? And there, there's no, and the DM kept saying, there's no aiming. You either hit or you didn't. And I'm like... That's actually not true. And no so I finally said, because of uh, with spider walk, I said, I jump onto the sandworm. And that, See, that's awesome. I jumped onto him, and then I stuck my knife in him. And because that's how I channel Eldritch power through my sword, mm -hmm. that's what I... He said, okay, so are you going to uh, set off the Eldritch power? And I said, no, not yet. My turn is done. I'm just on the worm with my sword in him. And they said, yes, okay, yeah. fine. And so my next turn, the next time it comes around, it became my turn. And I said, I start walking. He goes, what? And I said, I just start walking with my oh, knife. Still in it. With my knife still in him, channeling this <laughs> eldritch stuff. And I just splayed this sandworm open. And the GM was pissed. And he just says, it goes, shouldn't have been. This is a good creative use. You know, he finally turned around and he says, fine, it works. You kill the sandworm and it falls on you and kills you. Now, I will say I have had where the creature fells on falls on people but there are rules for the falling on people it's a d6 for so much but like there's rules for it and the thing is is that you were on the top of it so how did it fall on you uh it, when it See, fell over it i was under it it yeah, was that big you're on top even if it fell over you would have had a save because it doesn't make sense that you just happen to be under it instead of rolling away from it does that make sense I think Usually, so. when it's the it falls on you, it's the I kill the thing that's right above me. That's, you know, flying, like say a rock or something like that. Yeah. And if you kill it when it's right above you, do you know what happened? What's that? It comes down. <laughs> and then it's not my fault as a GM. I'm like, dude, 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 gravity. I, I don't control everything around here. Gravity. Gravity. But that sounds like it's the, you had a bad GM. You just have to play with a good GM. Yeah, I mean, that GM sounds like, to be honest, sounds like he was having a bit of a power trip there. I'm not... Yeah. The thing is, like, you know, if the GM wants to kill your character, they can kill your character. If they want to kill your character, you should not be sitting at that table with them. Absolutely. This is just like... Because why play with that person? Well, so, like you say, someday I will find the right GM and all will be well. Well, I think, I think you need to play some time with me or somebody from the team. I think you'd actually have a good time. There's nobody on the team that I wouldn't trust at, at the table. They're all good guys. Okay. So, no. I will say on the topic of player creativity and finding solutions, sometimes it does go a bit, bit too far. Like, um, 
Plus a player, he was trying to escape a tower, it was on fire, it lit it on fire, while, and then climbed to the top. It was an interesting strategy on his part. And there was a ballista at the top of this tower, and he decided, ah, I will escape this tower by tying myself to a ballista bolt and launching, my, launching myself out of the tower tied to that ballista bolt. Okay. And that was a bold strategy, to say the least. Uh, he was also, I believe, level 3, had about 15 hit points. Yeah, um, was but the problem. table... That was his problem. The, the, the entire table has some difficulty convincing him that falling damage might become an issue at some point during this plan. As his suggestion was, ah uh, yes, I will cast Mage Hand while I am in mid-air to redirect the bolt so that I don't take falling damage. And that's, Mage Hand only handles 5 pounds. <laughs> yes, no, there are more 5 pounds, and therefore <laughs> it doesn't work well for you. And there are also some concerns about casting spells while being tied to a ballista bolt that's currently going to be there. There are some checks that you might have to make that could be a little souring. However, there's a difference between, logically speaking, I don't know that you can pull this off. I'm not telling you it's not creative and hilarious and good fun, and I've had things that players have come up with that are hilarious and good fun that I'm like, okay, technically, this isn't going to work. However, it totally works. Why? The gods have blessed your creativity. The gods think that's hilarious. Because there's always a god of chaos, and they tend to be chaotic and think things like that are cool. So, you know, we'll let it go. It's that whole Jack Sparrow thing. When he ties yeah. himself to a cannonball so and shoots it so he can escape. And the guy says, you're mad! And he goes, well, I hope so, otherwise this never would have worked. Cartoon, um, cartoon uh, physics. I Absolutely. Walk, walk the cliff, as long as I don't look down, it's okay. Mm hmm. It's, it's really fun deliberately running games and just like announced at the beginning, we're going to run off of cartoon logic here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just break everything. It's the killing joke. John? Huh? I think you're trying to say something. I said it's the killing joke. See, the thing I found is is that you can't always say cartoon logic because a lot of times younger people don't get that. But if you say anime logic, you know, where you can run on the blade of a sword, where you can, you know, catch a spaceship and things like that. Yeah, okay, yeah, hmm. they get that. The, the killing joke is where Batman, or Joker is telling Batman a joke at the end of, of the of the graphic novel and he says that two two escapees from an insane asylum are on the roof of a, of the asylum to escape and they get to where they have to jump this uh, uh, space between two buildings to escape and, and the guy says it's too far it's too far to jump the guy says I tell you what I'll turn on my flashlight and lay it down and we'll walk across the beam and 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 we'll be able to, to walk across the beam to safety and the guy says, well, that'll never, you, you can't do that. Why? Because I'll get halfway across and you'll turn off the flashlight. And it makes Batman laugh. And I always loved that joke. <laughs> it's the same kind of logic. It, it's like, that, that'll work for you, but if I try it, you'll turn the beam off halfway across. Yeah. No? It's, uh, it's all in the delivery. Start. Batman. There you go. Oh, I'm known for that. All right, let's see what I can do here. I love how very versed you are in comedy, folks. Well, being an artist is it a small wonder? You Say, know, okay. Actually, I know a lot of artists who are not. So, kudos. Thank you. Thank you. video feed has decided to be hateful, so I'm trying to reload it so I can see where you're at. Still waiting for you to tell us when it's our turn to tell you stuff. Oh, why? Because you have ideas? Well, I want to see if they have ideas. Ah. I'm here to read their ideas to you. Well, I am almost to that point, but what I was actually going to do is ask you do you do did you get the um, list of 
uh, trivia questions, comic trivia questions. I absolutely did, and they are part of the list for Ross's trivia tomorrow. Ah. I appreciated your timeliness. You were actually one of the first ones to get them in. And I waited till the last minute. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we waited till the last minute. Yeah, there was there were several past that one. Uh, there was there was one person who will be nameless who got their questions in yesterday afternoon evening. Is that what that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, there's your squirrel rider. Yay! If my video was speed would go, I'm gonna have to redo it. Maybe not like the whole thing, just the stream. Because I want to see. Oh, that's awesome! Yay! <laughs> and its name is Morgan. In honor of Morgan not letting have them. That is fabulous. So gonna I was going to like we're gonna have to put that up somewhere on the website. Well, one of the things I was going to do is if somebody could answer a trivia question from my comics. They get a PDF version of this sent to them. Let me go and pull up your trivia questions. Because even if they're part of tomorrow, so there's like 40 questions tomorrow. So they'll have a preview of one of the questions. That's what I think. So we're just doing the trivia for fun. Ta da! Do you want one from Hey Penny Pie or Champions Challenge? Your choice. Okay. All right, you have to type the answer. Spelling counts because I can't spell, so I make other people spell. It's good fun. Who is the client? This is from Hey Penny Pie. Who brings Henry the case of the felonious feline filcher? Anybody got an adventure? Yes. Not yet. But I'm thinking. We're looking it up. It's one of them. Oh, somebody's typing. Typing that they don't know. Do you guys not read the Hey Penny Pie? You guys need to read it. It's really pretty good. I am behind. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, I haven't yet. I'm keeping the Champions Challenge, but you know, I'm reading it now, so you know that counts. That does count. And it's much appreciated. Champion Challenge one. What is the name of Doucette's pet? See if they're reading Champion Challenge. What was the first one, Doucette? Doucette. Uh, Doucette is the um, main character. It's a, it's a string, younger person. Yeah, okay. Now I'm just uh, making sure I heard the name right. That's how it's pronounced. Bizet, Bizet, Bizet is his name, and what is the name of his pet? Yes. Oh, somebody's typing. Somebody's typing. Somebody's typing.
<laughs> but I can't spell, and since I can't spell, you probably could spell it wrong as long as it's close. I'll go like, oh yeah, that's totally how that works. I don't remember if you were here, if you were with, ever, with us at the time. One of the first, um, like, online thing. Can I say the question again? Yes. So the main character of Champions Challenge, what is his pet's name? So what is the set's pet's, what is the set's pet's name? Oh, I'll give you another hint. It's a dog. There you go. But it was during the time where the guys were working on Elder Nations. And I put up a, um, I guess it was kind of a community. They said, because anyone knew the capital of Shishart... Oh, hey, hey, Owen got it. The Cali. Very good. Well done. If you would please send an email address to your uh, to um, Andy. Andy will forward that to me so that I can send you the PDF of this squirrel writer. All right. The next one, are you taking? I will. Uh, as soon as I get this saved, I will take a request. Okay. All right. So you guys start thinking of things that we can request. Make it. Don't make it easy on us. Hey, hey, hey! Sober. <laughs> Shut up, you're sober. Don't make this stuff easy. But anyhow, so the the quiz game thing was: is could you? Did you know the capital of Shashar, and could you spell it correctly? And what surprised me was how quickly people actually knew it. I'm sitting here going, dear freaking goodness. But no, they did. Like, that stuff hasn't been mentioned since early first edition, right? Somewhere in that max. So we're talking, you know, 20 years ago. And they were just coming up with it like... I can't, I can't even spell Shoshara right. I can't spell my own name right at your stage. I don't even need alcohol. Okay, that is right. that. So while he's doing that, anybody have ideas on what we can, you know, request that, Don? Like I said, don't make it easy. He sounded too sober. Dang it. <laughs> Darn sober artist. I'm a drunk. He draws. I'm drunking. You're drunking. I am drunking. Drunking. Because, you know, when I'm looking at my own devices, it's Transformers doing a volleyball montage. Nobody wants my suggestions. All right, I am back to base layer. What do we got, folks? The dwarf line dancing with two trolls. I like this idea of the dwarf line dancing, though. Are I we... don't know if, if, as a quick sketch, the two trolls are also a possibility. But can you do a dwarf line dancing? Oh, like a western line dancing? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I see, I'm thinking like can-can. But western line dancing might work. What do you guys think? Can-can, western line dancing. Can-can. W... Soccer says can can. Can you do a dwarf can doing a can can? Sure. That's a horse of a different oh, color. Dwarf doing a can can. I like this. You guys are on ball here. We're we're being creative, Don. I am a big fan of creativity. You are. All right, I'm thinking of Toulouse Lautrec. I am going to channel Toulouse Lautrec, who visited the Moulin Rouge many, many, many times. And if he saw Gimli, or of someone of his ilk, 
for lack of a better term. I think the dwarf with long hair up in a man bun. Oh, yeah. Obviously a man, man bun. Man Very bun. Necessary. Very necessary. Dwarf with a man bun. Um, I haven't painted painted in years, but thanks to my handy dandy Cintiq Pro 24, I am doing color work again, and I am doing painting of a sort in that respect. Cool. So drawing is a more favored medium for you? Uh, whenever I'm in trouble on a piece of artwork, I always run home to my pencils. And that's kind of where I'm at with digital. I start with my pencils, digital pencils, and then work from there. So we gotta give him big ears, big dwarf ears. Great big rosy cheek smile. And let's see. How am I doing for time? I got 15 minutes to get my can can in here. You're all good. All right, get this torso in here. And let's see. Raising his chain mail. Gotta get that curve in. Holding this. So, in answer to your question, is just draw is drawing my only creative outlet? No. 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 What else do you do? Theater. Theater. The theater. No, I've done uh, musical theater. Um, <gasps> That's cool. I, several years back, had the great fortune of being able to uh, portray the great the great character actor from Les Mis. Or the great character, uh, uh, character I guess, for lack of a better term, um, from Les Mis being Thenardier. I got to sing Master of the House. Yes, that was quite fun, and you had, of course, being seeing that it was set in France, I had to be able to do a good English accent. And anybody who's seen the show knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> the, the show is set in France, and they've got a bunch of people going, uh, speaking in absolute Cockney. Oh well. So Well, let me put it this way. If I were to sing a song for you, would you want to hear it? Sure. I'll give you a, a, a chance to um, uh, request. You can either have something from Camelot, Les Mis, 1776, My Fair Lady, or South Pacific. Audience, you 
guys have anything you want to vote on this one? I'm thinking I'm leaning I, towards I know the first three of those, and they're good musicals. So I was thinking 1776. They're leaning towards Camelot. Okay. I think that was in the top. Three. I think that was in the first three you mentioned too. Yeah, it is. So, so there Camelot is a. It is, sir. The great song that I uh, remember distinctly uh, from uh, Camelot. I had the good fortune to have the chance to sing this again for Julie Bell, who is the wife of the great illustrator Boris Vallejo. She heard me humming in a master's class that I was attending and said, do you sing? And I said, well, yeah, kind of. And she says, so she goes, would you sing me a song? I've, I've, I've heard you humming for a couple of days now. Can, would you sing me a song? And I sang um, How to Handle a Woman from, uh, uh, from Camelot. And it starts with some very insulting s statements. Arthur is very pissed because Guinevere's messing around and he doesn't understand what's going on and he starts uh, screaming to no one but he's talking to Merlin and um, he, he is saying you swore that you had taught me everything from A to Z from nary and omission in between well I will tell you what you obviously forgot the tower ruler rules a queen and what of teaching me by turning me to animal and bird but he goes on he goes on he goes on anyway the main thing is, is when he gets to the song, because I'm running short on time here, he says, he sings, uh, How to handle a woman. There's a way, said the wise old man. A way known by every woman since the whole rigmarole began. Do I flatter her, I begged in answer? Do I threaten, or cajole, or plead? Do I brood, or play the game, romancer? Said he, smiling, no, indeed. How to handle a woman? Mark me well, I will tell you, sir. The way to handle a woman is to love her, simply love her, merely love her, love her, love her. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Cleveland. Good night. You did really well. Mm. You got um, Bilal Katan Gross said that you had a very nice singing voice. I just spent about five seconds trying to figure out how to clap and push the song on. I'm not <laughs> sure this way to do it. Thank you, thank you. Your, your dwarf's coming along really well, too. Thank you. I'm down to 10 minutes, so let's wrap okay, this puppy up. You a couple. I'm next. It's okay. We're good. You're bored of me already tonight, darling. <laughs> I doubt that. You're really bored of me tomorrow. I'm here all day. Try the meal. <laughs> I'm here all weekend. Try the meal. <laughs> Socrates said, good job as well. Well, now the world knows I can sing. Yay! Mm. That's a good thing. I once sang karaoke with Larry Elmore. If you know who Larry Elmore is. I 
don't recognize the name, but I knew who Julie Bell was because I used to look at a lot of Laura Palermo stuff. Larry Elmore, I think that's a name on like a list of books that I need to. I've been told I need to read at some point. Larry Elmore is an artist who did a lot of the artwork for TSR way back when. Right. I know. Yeah. I met him. I a lot of and I met him at Gen Con a couple of years back. Luckily, he took a shine to me, and one evening, he saw me walking through the streets of Indianapolis and said, Don, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. And he says, and goes, we're all going to go do karaoke. He'd had a couple already. <laughs> and so I said, that is huh. how karaoke works. He, I'm sorry? That is how karaoke works. Pretty much. He had a couple already. Uh-huh. So... He said, I'm going to, I said, I could sing. And he pushed me all the way into the hall and had me sing a song or two. And then every time he saw me at Gen Con from that point on, he was like, you're amazing. You're amazing. It's like, no, dude, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> but it was fun. It was indeed fun. So... Here we go. All right. So, with rushing involved on this, let's try this. I like to do this. This. That's better. All right. And back up a little bit. This guy's a little bit more cartoony. Andy, you want to get another trivia question together? Absolutely. Thank you very much for your help tonight, by the way. Oh, we're good. So they did a little bit better with Champions Challenge, so... What is the name of the port for lava mining ships that Mandis, Bissette, and Chantille go to? Let's try that one. What is the name of the lava, the port? the name for the port, by the way. Thank Morgan for that. I have a game that's been running off and on for well over a decade that has um, names like, you know, the capital city, same capital city. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of creativity for the names. So they Not an imaginative bunch. Like, you know, between the port and capital city, there's a town right there in the middle on the one road. It's called Middleton. <laughs> Eventually, it just became a joke. They just kept coming up with names like that. To be fair, this is basically England strategy for northern towns. What was the port for lava mining? I'm guessing by lava mining, is it actually lava, or are they actually doing, like, a true fire? I don't know. <laughs> they just, that's where they, they, well, they go. That's... The name of the port. I got you. Are you still here, Don? I'm still here. Are you here? Are you there? What? Uh, I can I can hear you, Andy. Can you hear me, folks? I can hear you, Don. Okay. Awesome. If she has taken off, I can still hear. See if I can do something here with this. Hello? Hello, Andy. Oh, there it is. Oh, I found I had a technical error. My microphone, my headset wasn't working. Huh? Oh no. Yeah. We'll tell it to get back Sorry to work. Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, technology hates me. 
All right, so the name of the pork. Anybody? Okay, what about the name of the ship? You guys know the name of the mining ship they're looking for. You guys need to catch up on your reading. Ah, uh, this is what I was afraid of. I would find out somebody really reads my comics. I'm caught up on the reading. I'm just terrible with names. <laughs> well, Andy, give him... Tribute to Freddy says that they're sorry they're a little behind. Oh. Somebody on the other one had an answer. It's wrong. But it's close. And the fact that it's funny, but no. Someone is, is, is on our um, Twitch chat, too. That's why I'm supposed to watch both screens. Oh, look how great that's coming out there, Don. I like this. So somebody in um, Old Teague um, guessed Portland, which, ha, huh, close, but no. And then they guessed Portlandia, which is also funny. And in an interesting skit comedy show. Oh, it's raw. Alright, then who's going to get my dancing dwarf if they don't get it? I think it means I get it because I, I'm, I'm helpful. Well, yeah. Ross does because Ross is Ross. Well, there you go. <laughs> Portage. P-O-R-T-A-G-E. Portage. And the ship is the Inferno. That's... And the ship is the Inferno. Hey, those questions might show up in the uh, pause down ones now. Yeah. Okay. Then this here. Da -da 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 -da. And then now we go to the magic wand. Do that. And we go inverse and back up to this layer and hit Complete. Now we sign this puppy, because I'm. So you put the background on top of it. Um, normally no. But in this case, yeah. Yeah, ah. it worked. And then you can pop it out like layers. Uh huh. Exactly. What dark sorcery is this? It's this technology, magic-y stuff. I don't get it. And there we are, a Ken Ken dwarf with his man bun and having a grand time showing off his legs. Because dwarves do have nice legs. I don't know if you knew that. They do. There you go. And they're silky smooth, nice. too. They're not a hair on it. Beautiful. So we didn't have a winner for this, so I guess he'll, he'll, he'll still be dancing uh, later on in this weekend if uh, you want to offer him up as a prize for your trivia night. Andy. Yeah, we've got two different trivias going, so yeah. Okay, so we've got a dancing, can-can da uh, dancing dwarf. With a man bun. With a man very bun. Important. Uh, yeah, very important. Yeah. Very important. And sn silky smooth legs. And silky smooth legs. <laughs> And I've gotten through a double uh, mudslide, uh, almost, and I'm starting to feel it. So <laughs> it's time for me to say goodnight. Now, it's, it's the end of it, and now you're, you're feeling it. See, I knew you are too sober. All right. Good night, Don. Thank you. Thank Please you, guys. I hope everybody had a good time. Good night. <laughs>